von Exwegen is turned to the palace like a knight of the round table. The interior is comfortable and is also a showcase of different styles. It's like a fairy tale where kings used to amuse themselves. One of the striking features of the palace is the oriental influence, like the domes that we can see from far away anywhere in the mountain. Farther down, there is another palace built almost 450 years before Pena Palace. It has two chimneys, 33 meters high each, as inside royal banquets were prepared after the royal chasing here in the forests of Sintra. This is the most ancient royal palace that is in Portugal. The interior has the oldest collection of glazed tiles in Portugal, made in the 15th and 16th centuries. It was mostly a summer palace and glazed tiles from different periods keep room school and work as a museum of tiles in a palace where we can see the curious structure of a medieval construction. All the court had a dwelling here. Lots of palaces were built, each one in a very particular style, matching the variety and originality of the vegetation. On the other side of the mountain, there was a huge construction made from 1717 to 1730. In 13 years, Mafra Monastery was built just because the wife of the very rich Portuguese king John V gave him a child. It's all in marble and there are 4,500 doors and windows. The church of this huge monastery is also astonishing. It is inspired in the one of St. Peter in Rome and it's 65 meters long and it's all made of marble of several colors. Much of the marble came from this region of Portugal but also from Italy. The acoustics are excellent and to inaugurate this church there was a mass which lasted 24 hours. The dome is 70 meters high, the highest and most beautiful in Portugal and among one of the most graceful in the world. The rooms are also huge. Monks used to dwell together with the monarchy since this was not only a monastery but also a royal palace. For them, there were 900 different rooms. Calius Palace is halfway between Lisbon and Sintra. It's in the place of a former palace that was restored in the end of the 18th century in Rocaille style, imitating Versailles in France. The garden was designed by a French artist who was also inspired in Versailles. But it's inside that we feel Versailles' influence with its mirrors on walls and doors and the fine gilt woodwork.
The interior shows a decoration that was in all appropriate to a summer palace and a place where the court enjoyed the fine arts. Eastern influences like Chinese jars, silk on the walls and oriental design go well with the Portuguese and French furniture and tapestries and Italian chandeliers with Portuguese glaze tiles on the walls. The rooms are not large, but they are bright and sparkling, considering that there is not even one without a window and the light enhances the beauty of furniture with the silk on the walls as a background. That's because Rocaille style tries to be as delicate as possible. And here we are in the coast. Our first visit is the place where Sintra mountain ends abruptly in the ocean. It's Roca Cape, the westernmost point of continental Europe, the place where the land ends and the sea begins. This is the closest point to America in the European continent. This was called the Magnificent Cape by the Romans, the place where primordial people came to listen to the whistle of the setting sun. There are dozens of kilometers of nice beaches near Lisbon and we start by one that is close to Roca Cape, Guincho Beach. It was a desert beach in the past and it's now crowded by those searching for waves and strong wind with a beautiful mountain as a background. The rocky formation of the coast gives us stunning scenes and is like a crawl for several kinds of seafood and shellfish. Farther north there is Ericeira. This is a place where the strong breeze fills your lungs with fresh air, plenty of iodine. It's a beautiful seaside resort. It's also a busy fishing harbor where fishermen are always on the go. And it's quite a show to watch these brave men going and returning from the ocean, facing the waves when the sea is rough, in their small boats, like many other fishermen in Portugal. Even near the capital, there are plenty of small fishing boats with some characteristics that come from those used by the Phoenicians, Greeks and Carthaginians, maritime people stopping here on the Portuguese coast thousands of years ago. But let's get back to the south to see Estoril coast which is close to Lisbon and is one of the most famous seaside resorts in Portugal. Here, fishermen also mingle with bathers in a harmony that fits the tranquility of the bay. Estoril Bay was advertised in the beginning of the 20th century as the sunny coast because it is said to have 300 days of sunshine per year. There was a train connection with Paris in the past and tourists could come here directly from different countries in Europe. It became a fancy place in the world and is still a famous one. But it developed in the end of the 19th century when sea bathing became fashionable. Most of the bathers belonged to the court. 
Noble families built a number of exotic palaces near the beaches, matching the landscape. Lots of them exist today, and they are a decor of the coastline. It was also where many deported kings from different countries came to spend their exiles. If we go farther south, we have hundreds of kilometers of nice and warm beaches. But we keep close to Lisbon to see another typical one called Sesimbra. This is also close to another mountain we have to the south of Lisbon. It is called the Rabida Mountain, also with the magnificent vegetation and the gorgeous seaside resort. When we take a look at some of the beaches here, we realize that the water is so clear that we can often see the bottom of the ocean. That's because of a special seaweed that releases the water from impurities and we can swim in a crystal clear water. To the north of Lisbon, we find the famous beach of Nazaré. This beach appeared in the 18th century being covered by the ocean until then, and it's now a famous seaside resort. The name comes from the fact that, in the 12th century, Our Lady of Nazaré appeared at the top of the hill to the night called Don Fuas de Ropinho. It's where goes now a typical funicular. At the seashore, fishermen's nets mingle with sea bathers and these with the drying fish. Fishermen's wives take care of the fish that husbands catch, including trade. They have as a tradition to wear seven skirts. Besides making a beautiful handicraft, they wait their husbands sitting at the door front. We arrive to Fatima. In the center of Portugal stands one of the most important pilgrimage places visited by pilgrims from all over the world. They arrive on their knees to the chapel built on the place where Our Lady of Fatima appeared to the three shepherds, Lucia, Jacinta and Francisco, telling them three secrets and their message of peace in 1917 during the First World War. They all come in the hope of spiritual relief, or even to fulfill a promise. Mm -hmm. 
Battaglia Monastery started in 1387 and finished in 1533 is an homage to the victory of King John I, the one who started the magnificent generation. One of the masterpieces in Gothic style, where we can stare at one of the highest churches in Portugal, 80 meters long, with sober and elegant lines, being the central nave, 33 meters high. It was made with the golden limestone of this region, and it follows the austerity imposed to the Cistercian temples. In the pantheon of King John I, with a fine decoration in Gothic style, are the tombs of the King and Philippe of Lancaster, and some of their descendants, profusely decorated. They were those who brought new worlds to Europe, and Europeans to the new world. There are soldiers guarding the tomb of the unknown soldier from the First World War that we can see passing by the cloisters, also decorated in Manolin style. All this was a work of artists from different countries who brought influences from the English and French Final Gothic, the Plateresque style of Spain and from the Italian Renaissance style. Built from 1148 to 1222, Alcubasa Monastery 